one, Brian from WorkshopAddict.com. And after our comparison of these drills with the Bosch 36 volt drill, a lot of people brought up that we didn't include Hitachi's 18 volt, 1205 inch pound drill in that comparison. We wanted to circle around, fix some things that happened with the Milwaukee, and give you a great comparison of three of the most powerful drills that are on the market. To do this testing, we made sure that we moved through it quick, trying to test thermal overload, comfort, the ability to use the side handles, how well they worked and how they're connected, along with flat out power and the ability to stay running in battery time. So we're gonna go through all this, start out with how we tested in some of the larger objects. In our first test, we used a inch and a quarter spade bit, going through two by lumber, and we started out with the Milwaukee. Very solid, very consistent, drilled through this, no issue, shouldn't be a big problem. We moved on to the DeWalt, which the DeWalt seemed a little bit faster than the Milwaukee, but again, hard to compare, had zero issues. We moved on to the Hitachi. The Hitachi had what we felt is the same speed as the DeWalt, but it did have some issues with cutting out as we got close to breaking through the hole. So in that whole comparison, we kind of put DeWalt as the winner of that whole section, but we wanted to go a little bit further. So we decided to use that same bit, move into the four x four that we had behind us and start to see what's really gonna happen as we get deeper into that hole. There is no doubt that the 4x4 was a little bit more of a challenge. The Milwaukee was doing great going through this, but caught once at the end of the hole, installed. Other than that, realistically, the side handle worked great. The drill was going with some good speed. Very comfortable to use doing this. Nothing seemed like we were really pushing the drill other than we had one stall out. We put the DeWalt in there and we started pushing through those holes and we ended up with two stall outs on that, which you know, we can blame it on the wood, we can blame it on bits, how everything's going, but it's a comparison and as this goes forward, you'll see more as to each drill has its strengths and weaknesses. Two out of four holes, the DeWalt went right through it. Moved on to the Hitachi, which the Hitachi has a longer handle, longer side handle on it. Really has no issue going through this, good speed, but does end up cutting out once. So when we look at the end results of this, we really have the Milwaukee coming in first because it seemed to have the speed and consistency. The Hitachi tying it in first because it also kept up really well, only had one cutout each, and the DeWalt coming in third. Now we wanted to step this up again and go into a one inch auger bit. We did a lot of testing with this auger bit in the high speed mode. And you notice that with the Milwaukee and all the rest of them, we are not pushing all the way through the wood. We found that that would gum up the self feed portion of it and kind of skew the testing. So we kind of started over on this and said, hey, this is as far as we're drilling, pulling everything out. But either way, Milwaukee had zero issue with it. You can tell that it's working in high speed. No problem, very comfortable. Moved into the DeWalt. First two holes were great. Last hole, you could really hear that it sounded like something was giving the motor some really, some good tension on that bit, and it stalled out. Be it again the wood, whatever it may have been, it happened once. The Hitachi, when we went in, had zero issue, kept drilling through these holes, and it performed well. So in the end, on this one, you have the Milwaukee and the Hitachi going through without stalling out, the DeWalt having one stall out. Again, this is gonna get very interesting as we move forward, so stick with us. We're moving up to basically oversized bits for these drills. This is a three and five eighths inch self-feed bore bit. And it's clear that through this before, the Milwaukee was really kicking it in different areas. And when we put this bit in, put it on speed one, low going in, it was not happy. We kept trying, trying, and trying. It just really didn't want to dig in and keep going. We moved over to the DeWalt and thank God for this good handle. You can really see the pressure that it's putting on Jeff as he's trying to hold the drill straight. And the DeWalt continued to go all the way through, all the way down to the bottom. And again, because it's self-feeding, we, we didn't want to risk anything else. We just pulled it out at the end. You can see it's completely full. The Hitachi went in and was doing pretty much the same as the DeWalt, just continuing to dig and dig and dig and go through. But we got to the point where we weren't quite all the way down to the bottom of the hole where the DeWalt was and the Hitachi cut off. At that point, we thought, okay, it just stopped. We're gonna reverse it and come out. It did not 
reversed. It did not want to come out. Uh, we basically went into a thermal overload at that point. And granted, we've been pushing all these drills in many more tests, figuring out what works, what doesn't, what should we do with what bit. So the Tachi cut out on us on that one, and we had to reset it by pulling the battery out and putting the battery back in. Then we were all set. We could remove the uh, bit from the wood. Very interesting. Now we want to go one more step up. This last test in wood is with a six and one quarter inch big hog hole cutter. Way too large for any of these drills and the longer the handle on all of them is really what saved us. And we started out with the Milwaukee and you'll notice that as we're going through, it's cutting out. It's kind of going to be expected. I mean, this is a very large bit. You're trying to hold it straight. It's going to snag every once in a while in different areas. So we're just working it through, working it through, seeing if it's going to continue. And eventually, we got through the wood. It was a matter of how many cutouts did it actually have. But the power is there. If you really were in a snag and needed to use this drill to get through, you could use it. In fact, you could probably use all of them. Uh, but we moved on to the DeWalt next. In the DeWalt, we made a mistake, flat out. It was, with the handle in the front, it's hard to grab the chuck and turn it tight. And we made a mistake by having a clutch setting set so we weren't in the drill mode. So as we went in, it was stopping right away. Now I'm gonna go back to the last video we did with the DeWalt. Now we had a flex volt battery on it because we were comparing it to a 36 volt drill. But you can see, it does make it through that without a problem. It's a six amp hour, 3P battery on there. It still does cut out, but you can see the performance of it is very similar to the Milwaukee. Apologize for that error, but we didn't have enough wood to correct it after we figured out what we did wrong. We moved on to the Hitachi, and the Hitachi did cut out what seemed to be a little bit more than both the DeWalt and the Milwaukee, but again, you're comparing apples to apples, what's in the wood, how hot these drills are, because this is, getting to the end of this wood test and the batteries are getting drained, they're getting fatigued, everything's hot. So we made it through. With that said, so far in this battery test, the Milwaukee and the Hitachi are winning on what's left in battery power. The DeWalt has got the least battery power out of all of it. We wanted to reset, get new batteries in here and keep going. Testing the hammer drill function with the Milwaukee very simple, it's got 32,000 BPM. We're using a half inch masonry bit going into pavers. Should be a very simple test. You can hear it's going through absolutely no problem, but we're just testing how well each works in hammer mode. Not an issue at all with the Milwaukee. We moved on to the DeWalt. The DeWalt has an unlisted amount of BPMs that we could find, but there is a definite difference in noise. In fact, it goes from a point of uh, you probably don't need hearing protection with the Milwaukee to you definitely need hearing protection with the DeWalt. Totally on a new level and very loud, but again, worked very, very well. We moved on to the Hitachi, and the Hitachi was nice and quiet, very similar to the Milwaukee, but it just didn't seem to have the hammers. Now it does have 31,500 BPM, but it didn't seem to really hit as hard as the Milwaukee or the DeWalt. So it was significantly slower. These models here are all non-app models. I'll say they don't have, uh, the Milwaukee doesn't have one key, the DeWalt doesn't have tool connect, and there's no way to change them. So there are a new DeWalt, Tool Connect one, and there is a new Milwaukee with the one key app. That changes things up a little bit because the next thing we just wanted to show you the clutches. When you use this Milwaukee, you still have a manual clutch. So you can kind of hear what sounds like gears just grinding when you hit when you get down. The DeWalt has an electronic clutch, so you'll kind of hear it pulse a little bit and then it'll turn off the drill. I really like that. Some people don't. So it's all a matter of preference, what you've had. We get a lot of comments on both ways. The Hitachi, again, is a mechanical clutch. Goes down, gives you that gear grinding sound. They're all easy to adjust. You can adjust these up for just about anything. They are larger drills. Another thing to compare on all of them, they all have a metal half inch chuck that is keyless. Now, the Hitachi and the DeWalt had the exact same chuck which we were surprised. I mean, exact same markings, exact same everything. They work very well. The Hitachi sticks out a little farther in the front where the DeWalt is kind of covered by the handle, 
where you put on your side handle. That little area where you put on the side handle is what makes it a little bit harder to tighten the DeWalt when you have a large bit in front of it. Not a big issue, but we did notice that. Now on the same thing, when you had the side handle on on the Hitachi and we were tightening it every once in a while, we would change our clutch settings or the drill settings. But overall, very nice chucks. I like them all, but I really think that Hitachi and DeWalt have probably the better chuck out of the three. Hitachi is a two-speed, DeWalt is a three-speed, Milwaukee is a two-speed. By far, if you were gonna get into metal, DeWalt's two-speed rocks. The handle differences, this is the size of the handle on the Hitachi, size of the handle on the Milwaukee, in the handle on the DeWalt. Now you can really see there's a big difference. And when you're using these drills, if you're in tight areas, the Hitachi is gonna have a hard time getting in there with the side handle just because it's so large. Now the Hitachi screws in on the side to an aluminum housing. So you screw it in nice and tight, feels secure, it can go on either side. My fear is long-term, or if you got into a situation where you had a really big bind that you broke the aluminum housing. I only say that because in our last testing, when we had the Milwaukee out, the Milwaukee clamps basically over the top. There's two indentations, it clamps inside there, and it can be really tight. Now, one of our videos that we did, we broke this off the top and had to take this out of competition. So you, when anything that clamps to something that's aluminum, I always kind of get fearful of what can happen if there is a casting issue or if something gets into a real big bind. I'm not a huge fan of this. I have a tough choice. I'd probably rather go with the screw in. This does work, but we have broke it once. DeWalt's slips over the front. It's easy on, easy off. It's shorter, but I like the way it works. It gives me the most confidence in using the drill. Worst case scenario, we have had the slip on us. So, in all three situations, there really is nothing that probably stands out as the best. With that said, comfort. Comfort's gonna vary on all of these drills. But if you have a larger hand, most likely the Milwaukee is gonna give you the grip on the bottom with a little bit larger barrel. Not a lot, but it's very similar to the DeWalt. The DeWalt has a little bit more contour to it, but it has a little bit smaller barrel at the bottom. Jeff really likes the grip on the Milwaukee. I'm a big fan of the DeWalt. Just seems to fit me just that hair better. Again, everybody's hands are different. Now when you move over to the Hitachi, which seems like a little bit larger drill, you have a lot more contouring going on. In fact, when you put your fingers around, you can feel some areas that the rubber overmold comes up to catch your fingertips. I like it. It just takes me a little bit more to get used to it. It's almost like it's molded for your hand. So some people with smaller hands, as far as what we can see, are probably really gonna like the feel of this Hitachi. Going through these, and if you're in one brand, you're saying, what brand am I gonna buy? It's really gonna matter of, are you in the brand already, or what are you looking for? Now this might be a little biased in my position, because this is what I see personally. Milwaukee has a ton of tools on the market, right? They are kicking it in the automotive world if you're looking for impact wrenches, if you're looking for anything with a one key app, if you're looking for items that are going above and beyond what a normal tool is, Milwaukee has got it. Now, DeWalt has this, this is a kick-ass drill, three speed, it's great. They are really kicking it in construction. They've got some great saws out, the FlexVolt line is there. They're kicking it in probably more of wood cutting they don't have the automotive impacts. It's a, just what you do is kind of where you're going. Hitachi has really been stepping up their game lately. I see a lot of what they have. They have a, a great framing nailer that's battery operated at this point, and they have the triple impact driver, the triple hammer impact driver. That thing is absolutely amazing. So if you're in these lines, they all have something different to offer. They all excel at something just slightly better. But either way, all three of these drills did great. It's really surprising when you sit back and look at some of the testing and say, hey, this one cut out once or twice here, this, this drill cut out once or twice here, but when you really put some big power to it, the drills that were cutting out a little bit in the smaller stuff that we use really didn't perform as well as they should have with some of the larger bits. So 
When it comes down to it, it's a matter of software on the inside. What are they doing to protect these drills? How much power or watt outputs can the motors handle? Everything's internal and it's all done by who's down there writing that software for each one. Personally, you can see there's some differences between the two. Everyone's going to have their choice. But what I invite you to do is tell me below which unit you would choose. Then below, also tell me if you are in one battery platform or if you are in one battery platform, let us know which one you're in. Hey guys, we do these videos for you. So tell us what you want to see reviewed. Follow us on social media. Give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. We'll keep kicking this stuff out, showing you the differences between these tools. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a great day.